that's on the first step. We actually have a mature sporophyte and the flower is part of that mature sporophyte. We're talking about angiosperms here, so the majority of the plant will spend its life cycle here in the sporophyte generation. Uh, we have different parts of the gametophyte being shown here. So boxed here is gonna be the gametophyte generation, and we can actually see the male pollen grain, that's the male gametophyte, so these anthers, and we can see the female gametophyte. Well, those are gonna be, not exactly seen here, but the ovule housed in the ovary. That's a female gametophyte. So in step two, I'm actually showing you self-fertilization. Not all flowers do this. In fact, some prevent this from happening because they like to have a um, large genetic pool, so they don't wanna self-fertilize themselves, but I am showing you that here. So in this next step, I can actually see pollen grains from the anther landing on the sticky stigma. That's called pollination, whenever pollen goes to stigma, from anther to stigma. This is pollination. When that occurs, a pollen tube is made in the stigma. It starts forming itself. And this allows for the pollen grain, so that male gamete, to make its way to the female gamete, so down to the ovule, which then sperm is going to be released here to meet egg that's housed in the ovule. We can see that protective embryo sac that's going to house that female egg. So we need to get through all those different structures in order to get there. When sperm meets egg, when that happens, fertilization now has been achieved. So I can actually see fertilization occurring there and what happens is a zygote is formed. This zygote will eventually form into a multicellular embryo and tissue surrounds that embryo known as the endosperm. The endosperm is nutrient rich. It's basically gonna act as a food supply for nourishment for the growing embryo. So I can actually see the endosperm sticks here. I can actually see um, a capsule forming around that per, uh, delicate embryo. And now I can see a multicellular embryo growing. Appreciate that I went from a haploid or a part here, very, very quick haploid gametophyte stage here, highlighted in pink, to again a diploid part of the life cycle, that zygote formation via the process of fertilization. The majority of the life cycle of an angiosperm is diploid, is sporophyte generation. Very, very brief gametophyte. Uh, okay, here I have that multicellular embryo growing, that endosperm is providing nourishment, the fruit develops from the ovary portion and the seed from the ovule housing that embryo growing. Uh, there's the seed being released out there into the environment and that's a dormant seed. When it is ready to germinate and conditions are favorable, I can see that the sporophyte generation will grow. This is a eudicot, two cotyledons forming. I can see those branched leaves, taproot formation, all that good stuff, and eventually it'll mature, having that beautiful flower reproductive unit to continue on the life cycle. Everything I've just said, written down in bullet format, kind of going through step by step what I just went through with you, Appreciate that in angiosperms, in addition to gymnosperms, I just want to point out one more time that the sporophyte generation, everything colored in blue here, is the sporophyte generation. That's the diploid generation. It's dominant, and a very small portion of its life cycle is the gametophyte generation. It does occur, and there is an alternation between generations constantly throughout the angiosperms life cycle, but it's that sporophyte that dominates.